So I'm a big fan of silent cooling and there's a few different options here. So the Ice Tower cooler from 52Pi is the one I've used in most of my videos and uh, I generally use it all the time. As you can see there's no fan on it I, because it works fine, 2147 overclock is, uh, is perfectly cool and I don't need any extra cooling on that. I have got another one in here but this has got a fan on it, I've got a separate video on this one. And uh, there is a some sort of cooler inside the Desk Pi Pro, and I haven't opened this for a while. Uh, that's also from 52Pi. This was a pre-release version, uh, and I'll be interested to see if this is the same or if it's different. Uh, I, all I know about it is it's a low-profile cooling fan, uh, but it has a heat sink in there as well. So let's open it up. Okay, so this is what comes in the box. I've got a load of screws and risers and some thermal pads. Uh, I've got a base for it, screwdriver, instruction book, and what looks like a very similar sort of size heatsink to the other 52 Pi one. So yeah, overall I'd say it's a similar design, uh, but it's obviously oriented slightly different, so you can have it lower inside a case. And a fan that is, is it slightly bigger? To my eye, it looks slightly bigger than the old one on the Ice Tower cooler. Well, not that this is necessarily old, it's probably still going. And some basic instructions. But I'm going to try a Pi 4 without cooling, first of all, just to show you how much difference it makes. So this is my build of KDE Plasma, which I usually use on an 8 gig Pi, but I'm going to use it on the, I think it's a 4 gig Pi, this one. Uh, I'll see as soon as I boot it up. So let's start that up. So running from an SSD with no cooling at all. So let's run NeoFetch and see that we're definitely overclocked. Yeah, it shows up as 2.2 and this is an 8 gig Pi 4. I thought it was a 4 gig. Uh, so if I want to run Stressberry, I've actually got it in uh, one of the documents. So if you've downloaded this build, there's three videos that go with this build of KDE Plasma. Uh, one which was setting it up and then... Uh, two videos where I'm tweaking it. If you get the second video, that's got the latest download and uh, it comes with a load of things pre-installed. But watch the videos if you want to see what's in it. So if I go to Documents, there is a document in here which has details about the OS. But if we scroll down through, then there's a Stressberry test here. So let's copy that and paste it into Terminal. And I'm also going to run pSensor as well. So if I press the Windows key, start typing PS, pSensor comes up. Because this remembers the maximum temperature that it got to. Uh, it's just an extra bit of information. Right, let's go back to this and start the Strasberry test. And let's put this up here so I can zoom into it all together. So it's just trying to find a stable temperature before it starts the test. Okay, so it's ramping up as you can see. It's starting to see the temperature going up really high now. Okay, so now it's going to be running at 2147, it says 2148. Uh, you can see the temperature steeply climbing. So we're already at 81.3, so it's going to thermal throttle itself. Yeah, it's already started. Look, drop down to 1976. Because that's the only way it can keep itself cool. Yeah, drop right down to 600 now, look. And it's up and down, just trying to maintain its temperature. Okay, so it's all finished, and it got to 86 degrees. So pretty hot, and as you can see, it was thermal throttling itself all the time because it couldn't maintain that. I put a 1080 video file on the desktop. I just need to go to the store and download Handbrake, which will basically just convert that video uh, and we can see how quick it does that. So we type in Handbrake and install it. I do like the way this store works, uh, the way it installs, the way it tells you about the video, reviews, screenshots, everything like that. Right, let's launch that. Okay, so let's close P-Sensor, because if I open that up again, I think it will reset it. I want to see how hot it gets. Okay, so I've closed down P-Sensor and started it again, and you can see the temperature at the moment is 65 degrees. So let's open the source on the desktop. And we're just going to go with this standard preset, 1080-30. Hit start. And let's see how long this takes, and also how hot it gets. Again, if I move this over to here, so it's already up to 83 degrees, yeah, 85. So it will be thermal throttling now. So this will be slowing down this process. So we're looking for uh, a quicker speed when we're using better cooling. Okay, so 97.5%, nearly there. Got to 87 degrees. Still running 85, 86. Okay, that's all done. So let's close all this down. So first up, I need to put the thermal pads on. It looks like you get two of each. 
Thermal paste is better than these thermal pads, but this is what it comes with, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to take this fan off for the moment because the next test I want to do is without the fan. And it's got the three cables on this fan, which means that it's controlled by the Pi, so you can set the temperature that comes in and goes off. So it's going to be this way around because this bit's lower than this bit. Might be more sensible to turn it off. And pop these little standoffs in. So that's all four of the standoffs in. Let's pop this board on. Now there is, uh, you can pull off the uh, sort of the cover to make it clear, but I'm just going to leave the cover on. If I was going to complain about something, it's that they put it as screws touching the the worktop. Now it's fine on this worktop, but I I would really put rubber feet on it because it just feels nicer and there's less risk of any scratches or anything. You can see that doesn't sound so great. But it's all together now. I think it looks pretty cool as it is. I like the lower design. Still got access to the GPIO pins. Nothing is obscured by it. Let's switch it on. Okay, so first up, let's run the Strasbury test. Okay, so it's about six degrees cooler already uh, just on that baseline test. And you can see the frequency, it's not dropping. It's at 2148 all the way down, 75 degrees. Hopefully it doesn't hit 80 or 85. Yeah, perfect. So it didn't have to throttle. Uh, and bearing in mind this is a stress test, so it's maxing out all four cores. So it's designed to heat it up and use it to its full potential. And that meant that even without the fan, we haven't lost any performance. So let's see if it makes a difference in the uh, video rendering test. So again, let's close down P-Sensor and open it up again. Open up handbrake. You can see the temperature's already dropped. So let's open the source and hit start. So in theory, this is gonna be much quicker because it's not gonna it's not gonna throttle the CPU. Temperature's quite high, 74. Now obviously I ran this straight after a stress test, uh, so it's not normal usage, but I'll do the same for the fan. Okay, so that's all done now. Let's shut it down again. Okay, so I've put the fan on. I've put the blue cable on, but I haven't enabled PWM fan yet. So let's have a look at that. So let's see if this is the same as before. So Control alt t to launch a terminal and sudo raspi-config. Go to performance and fan. And would you like to enable fan temperature control? Yes. Uh, which GPIO is the fan connected? It says 14 in the book, so I'm gonna say okay. And what temperature? We're going to say 80, that's the default temperature. The fan on GPO 14 is enabled and will turn on at 80 degrees. So it's on at the moment. I'm not sure if I have to reboot. Yeah. Okay, it's rebooted. And as you can see, the fan is not on at the moment. So let's run Strasberry and see if we can get it on. So it's already cooler, but that's because before I used the PWM fan control, uh, it was blasting at 5 volt to cool it right down. Uh, but we'll see what happens on this. Okay, so no fan yet, but it's nowhere near the temperature it needs to come on. Okay, so the fan didn't come on at all. Uh, the test was obviously going to be the same whether the fan was there or it wasn't. Uh, in fact, if anything, the fan would be slightly blocking the cooler. But because it had been blasted by the fan, that's why it's showing slightly better results. But anyway, good news that uh, the maximum it got to was uh, 71 degrees. It says 72 above here, but 71 on P sensor. So really, really good results with that. Let's try the handbrake test. Now this will be the interesting one. Surely the fan will come on. So let's start that. The temperature 67 at the moment. So it's already got hotter than it did in Strasbury, 74 degrees. Put my camera on the fan to see if it comes on. 78 degrees, it's been at 79. There you go, fans come on at 80 degrees. So works exactly as it should, and then we should start to see that temperature drop. 76, 75, at what point will the fan go off? Pretty soon, 74, and the fan's gone off at 70 degrees. That works perfectly. Okay, so, uh, well, it all makes sense. With no cooling, uh, it's really not good to be overclocking. Seven minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, really, really slow time for the video render. 
with the heat sink it uh, it didn't half it but it got near to it four minutes 25 and with the heat sink and the fan which obviously cut in at that crucial point uh, that brought it down to four minutes and 11 and I suppose you could say as well because the CPU is getting less hot then it will possibly lengthen the life of the CPU. I think I've found my new cooler. Uh, I really like the design of it. It's nice and low profile. I'm really happy with the fan that only comes on when it's really needed. So pretty much I'm gonna have silent cooling. It's very rare that I run this operating system maxed out. I don't do a lot of gaming on this. I usually use different operating systems for that. This is more uh, my main tool for research and writing images and various other things. I have change the cable to you can see the back corner there top right it's actually 3.3 volt now it was on this front one here which was 5 volt so when it does come on it's going to be a bit quieter but I think that's more than adequate for what I need and I'm going to put it on top of my cluster case which is my main case that is in pretty much all of my videos so thanks very much to 52 Pi for sending me this fan and cooler it's really impressive uh, it's a great price I'll put links in the description if you want to get one Thanks very much for watching, please like and subscribe.